podcast. This is Isley, and today we are going to talk about the parable of the wise and foolish builders. And joining me today to talk about this parable are Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Isley. And my dad, Warren. Hi, Isley. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you for joining us to talk about this today. You're welcome. <laughs> so Isley is going to join us to talk about, as she said, this parable, because... So last week in in the podcast, we talked about a parable that could have a number of different meanings. It's one that is open to a number of different interpretations. And there are some other of Jesus's parables that seem to have layered meanings and meanings that that we may can grasp at, at different levels as children, as adults, and everywhere in between. And while many of Jesus's parables are implicitly about the kingdom, Others do seem to place more of a direct moral imperative on our lives and seem to have a direct application on something that we are supposed to do as people and more specifically as followers of Christ and of citizens of the kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim. And so we're going to to look at this parable of the wise and foolish builders. And, and part of what we wanted to do in this parable is, is kind of explore this topic of, of how we approach and how we read parables at different age levels, at different kind of places of, of faith and understanding. And so we're going to get into a few different conversation topics around that. But I thought this would be a good parable for us to do that with. And I thought, what better way for us to begin that exploration than to have someone that may have a little different perspective joining us. So that's why Isley's here with us. Isley, how old are you? Uh, nine. Uh, nine? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Why time. kind of? Because my birthday is on July 26th and I'm turning 10. So your birthday is a week away. So yeah. you're still nine, but just for a little bit longer. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so Isley's going to read this parable for us today. And then, Isley, you're going to kind of give us your perspective, and we're going to talk about this parable a little bit. Sound good? Yep. All right. Go for it, Isley. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Awesome. Thank you. So, Isley, if I were to ask you, what do you think the point of that story is, what would you say? What's Jesus trying to tell us? Well, that if um, we make good choices, um, there's a more likely chance that we will live longer. And if we make bad choices, there's a more likely chance that we will um, live shorter. That's good. So what, what in the story led you to believe that? Um, well, because the person who um, made his house on rocks, because rocks are um, stable, um, it didn't fall down But the person who built his rocks on sand, because sand isn't as stable as rocks. Um, the person who built his house on sand, that house fell down. So Jesus, you, so you hear Jesus saying, if we make good choices... We're going to have a better chance of living. Our life's going to be better if we make good choices, basically, right? Yeah. Good. Right. What do you think Jesus would have us think are good choices? What would Jesus say are good choices? Um, like praying. And like if your mom or dad says to go clean your room, you better go clean your room. <laughs> Not go mess it up some more. <laughs> <laughs> so praying and obeying your parents, these yeah. are good choices. Yeah, those yeah. are good choices. Yeah. 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 What else? Um, some other good choices is eating healthy foods. Eating healthy foods. That's a good choice. That way your teeth don't rot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want our teeth to rot. No. That's good. <laughs> and so maybe, maybe part of what Jesus is getting at too is that if we make good choices, we're going we're gonna to be able to have the type of life that Jesus wants us to have. You think that makes sense? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Isley, when we were talking about this story before we, we started recording, you said you liked houses. You like this story because you yeah. like houses. <laughs> what do you like about houses? Um, well, they give you shelter when it rains. Mm. And houses normally have refrigerators to keep, to keep your food cold. Mm. So. so houses give us shelter. They give, they give us things we need to live. Yeah. They, so they give us protection. They give us things we need to live. And a bed. Right? And a bed. Mm. So they give us comfort. So, so houses give us comfort, protection, things we need to live. And so in this story, Jesus is saying, if you listen to me and follow my commands, if you do what I say, it's like building a house that's going to last. Yeah. So if you were to think about that for your life, if you follow Jesus' commands, what might happen? I will live a good life. Yeah, you may have all those things that a house would bring in your own life, right? You'd have and protection. And I might have a mansion. Well, <laughs> he doesn't promise you a mansion, unfortunately. But you would have protection, you'd have comfort, right? And you'd be able to, to live the type of life that God is calling you to live, right? Yeah, right. That's good. Yeah. What do you like? Anything else you like about this story? I like playing in the rain. You like playing in the rain? <laughs> I don't think that was part of the story. It said rain. It did say yeah, rain. It's storms. Would you rather play on rocks or sand? Sand, as long as if there's no fire ants, it doesn't stick to you, and it's not at a beach. Mm. That's a lot of conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Isley, do you think that Jesus was communicating this story to kids, or do you think he was telling this to adults? Both. Both? Both. Do you think both people were there, both yeah. groups of people? Yeah. How do you think the kids understood what Jesus was trying to say? Like me? You think they understood it like you? Yeah. Yeah. And so Jesus was telling them that if they obey his words, that they wouldn't fall away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that the storms represent anything? Um, sin. You think the storms represent sin? Yeah. Maybe yeah. so. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. What else? What else could they represent? What do? What do? Bad guys. Bad guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bad guys. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus is saying that if you obey him, you're like somebody who builds your house on the rock. And so, what happens when the storm comes? Your house will not blow down. Your house will not. Blow but it down. might get a leak. Well, I guess Might there could leak. be some challenges, but your house will stay strong, right? It will still be there. But Jesus says if you ignore him, if you don't obey his words, it's like somebody who built their house on Sand. a soil that's going to get swept away. Is that very smart? Nope. Yeah, so Jesus is trying to say if you don't listen to me or obey me, you're not really using your head very well. <laughs> Yeah. Your noodle. You're a noodle. not using your noodle. There you go. <laughs> so the point, maybe the point of this parable then is use your noodle. Use, use your my noodle. Because I like getting in the pool and using a pool noodle. A pool noodle. <laughs> yeah. So Isley, do you have any questions for us? Um, can I be in a podcast again? Maybe <laughs> someday. <laughs> so thank you, Isley. <laughs> Well, that's pretty fun. So we're kind of talking about how there are different ways of interpreting and applying the parables to different age groups. So I was thinking about to children, to youth, and to adults. And when we are teaching the parables to children, we often employ games and interaction. So we didn't really do much of that here. Um, pictures and color, rhythm and rhyme and tangible takeaways. We usually want them to have something physical that they can touch, um, smell, see, to associate with the lesson of the parable. And when teaching to youth, I still like to use games and interaction, higher level discussion, thought provoking questions, and real life applications. So I think that there's this shift in how we talk about parables between kids, youth, and then to adults. Uh, for adults, we usually use sermons, point-by-point point Bible studies, discussion, 
and life applications that are a bit broader and more general that people can apply themselves um, to their lives. So I was just thinking about how parables sound to younger ears versus to older ears, and if Jesus himself was teaching differently to kids versus to adults. And Isley said that she thought both people were there, kids and adults, that they were both present when Jesus was teaching this. Um, so it is interesting to hear maybe how kids understand the stories, but I do think that as people who have walked with God longer and maybe have a broader understanding of the meaning of the scriptures and what Jesus was teaching, it's helpful for then us to go in and to also instruct um, and to explain a bit more of what Jesus is, is talking about. I don't know if it's necessarily to correct, but to give more of the context. Um, because Isley said at first that it's just, you'll live a long life. And I don't really think that's what Jesus is talking about, do you, Warren? Well, I think, uh, no. But, <laughs> but I think that's why, you know, it's, it's good to uh, in, engage kids in those conversations. Because mm -hmm. I do think that you start from one understanding. Because I think from mm -hmm. a kid's perspective, if you're in a house and it gets destroyed, what happens? Yeah, you die. You die. Huh. So I think she's reading it mm -hmm. very literally. Mm -hmm. Like, if your house gets destroyed and you're living in that house, you're probably going to die. Yeah. And so that's the takeaway from the story for, from her is make good decisions and you live. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you can, and so that's why, you know, I started asking her questions in because I think you can take that try to do this quickly on the fly in the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were actually having a conversation or in a Bible class setting or something and could do this a little longer with a group of kids, I think what, at least what I would personally do is take that and say, well, you know, Jesus said he came to give us life to the full. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came to give us the life that we are, are kind of designed and called to experience as citizens of the kingdom. Yeah. And so, yes, that is true, that if we make good decisions, we're going to experience life. Mm -hmm. uh, now, does that guarantee I'm going to live a long life? Does it guarantee I'm going to have a mansion, as I <laughs> alluded to at one point? No, it doesn't. But, but it means I'm going to experience uh, or at least live out the, the life that, that Jesus has, has called me to. And that's what I hear him saying there is that if you, if you follow my commands, your house is going to be built on something that's going to sustain you mm -hmm. through whatever life throws at you, yeah. whether it is poverty because you don't have a mansion mm -hmm. or you know sickness and death mm -hmm. of someone in your family because long life wasn't what they they had or whatever it may be um and so i think the same thing you know with her saying that the the storm is sin like that's not how i read the story mm -hmm. but in her mind yeah it makes sense that what's the bad stuff that could come yeah. into your life well it's sin mm -hmm. so so yeah i thought it was interesting to hear just kind of how she would have heard some of those elements of the story mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's been really fun hearing how kids interpret even some of the passages of the Bible that we take for granted that we've heard so many times. Um, so yesterday in Children's Church, we were doing uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. But the curriculum alluded to the story of the Israelites going through the wilderness and God leading them with the fire by day and the cloud at night. And then I had one of the youngest boys come up right in my face as I was telling the story. We were all sitting down and he stood up and walked right up to me and said, but I thought that the fire was inside of the cloud. <laughs> it's just funny, like, it's not really a significant part, but just thinking about how, how kids are visual and literal too. So when they hear that God led the Israelites by fire and by cloud, you know, they might not have thought that it's like two separate things um, by day and by night. And so we are going through that story. So it's been fun for me to, to realize how kids interpret scripture and to think about how we should almost honor their interpretations or what they're thinking about but continue to give them instruction and context that will help them to understand it better and apply it to their lives better. Yeah, to, to build on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of the metaphor of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and it's why I, I kind of wanted to do this parable 
um, for this particular conversation because I wasn't going to use this one in the series, but I, one of the things that I like and appreciate about this parable is that I do think it's one that is fitting for a lot of different age group, the mm-hmm. age groups that it seems to have, I think, layers of, of meaning and application mm-hmm. for different age groups. And I do think it's one of the parables that seems to have the most kind of, as I said at the beginning, the most direct kind of like thing that we're supposed to do with it or moral mm-hmm. implication or something. Some of the others are very vague. Some of them are, I, I've come to see them really more as about Jesus or about the kingdom mm-hmm. uh, or as a critique specifically about Israel's leaders or something like that. Mm-hmm. But this one, just to give a little context of the setting of this parable, like this is basically the end of what well, it is, the end of the Sermon on the Mount mm-hmm. as it's recorded in Matthew. And so this is pretty much the way he ends that sermon. Like he's telling people a lot mm-hmm. of stuff to do with their lives. It's the application of the sermon. Itself. Yeah, it's the application of the sermon. He says, mm-hmm. so here, here's what you're supposed to do with oh, this okay. sermon. Uh-huh. And, and I think the irony of that is that if you look over the <laughs> interpretation of the Sermon on the Mount itself, uh-huh. there's been a lot of different interpretations about it over kind of the course of church history that some people have even seen it as, like I've, I've read before that some people see it as, kind of Jesus's, um, Jesus's dissertation on the need for God's grace, basically. Mm-hmm. Because it's as if Jesus is saying, no one can live up to this. Mm-hmm. No one can love their enemies. No one can not be angry with their brother or sister. And so because you can't do all this stuff, mm-hmm. you need God's grace. Mm-hmm. Which to me feels like you're just reading a lot into that sermon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's not explicitly anywhere in there. And I think the irony of that interpretation of the sermon is the way that he ends it. He says, if you're wise, you're going to go out and do this stuff. Like you're going to hear the stuff I said and you're going to go out and and do it. And and so that's one of the things that I think, you know, this I think this is a popular parable for kids Mm -hmm. because there is sort of easy to grasp imagery. Mm -hmm. Like even as Isley said, uh, you know, if you build a house on rock, it's going to stay better than if you build it on sand. Like, Isley is a nine-year-old who knows nothing about engineering right. or construction principles or anything like that. That imagery makes sense to her as a kid. Mm-hmm. A house is going to be more stable on rock, and so yeah. I should do that. Mm-hmm. And, and so you can build a lesson off of that for kids, and you can take it a little deeper for youth. But then I think sometimes what happens then is we leave those stories behind as adults because huh. we feel like we've kind of... We've, we've milked them for all they have because mm-hmm. I've talked about them as a, as a youngster. But these, these have deep meaning for us as adults that Jesus is saying, mm-hmm. I'm, the way that I can build my house on something that's going to stay is if I can figure out how to love my enemies well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's, it may be easy for me to understand that, but to mm-hmm. live that out and to be the wise builder. Yeah. That's going to take some work. For sure. So do you think that you would be able to walk through the different age groups of like children, youth, and adults and how you, like you talked about layers of meaning or understanding that you would have at those different phases. Have you thought through what they might be for different age groups? Not fully, Mm -hmm. but I do think, and that's where, you know, if we were going to really dive into that, you know, we could have maybe experts at each level of yeah. <laughs> of, um, of age development come mm-hmm. and, and share some of that. But I think, I do think, um, you know, I think if we were teaching this for kids, we would approach it differently than we did with Isley, than just, hey, what do you think the story's about? Yes. But I do think one message for this story for kids is, you know, choices matter, mm. basically. Yeah. Uh, like, I think that could be... Um, an application of this story Mm -hmm. and that part of our response to God's love for us is to to listen to what he says and to believe that he has our best interest in heart Mm -hmm. that that I'm going to the the, the best thing that I can do with my life is to love God and as a and and live the life that he's called me to live as a part of my my outpouring of love to him in response to his love for me Mm mm-hmm Yeah. Um, So I have this little book, The Parables of Jesus by Archbooks. 
And is it okay if I read a little bit of it? It was super cute, and I found it. Go for it. Um, it's published in 1982, so, you know, it's outdated and all that. But it's basically a kid's book with illustrations that goes through some of the parables of Jesus and kind of puts them all together. Um, so I thought that that was a good little example of how we might try to teach this to kids. So it starts like this. When Jesus on this earth did dwell, many a story he loved to tell. We call them parables, and in each is a lesson Jesus wanted to teach. When you hear these stories, keep in mind, there's always a message for you to find. And then it has this nice illustration of Jesus and the people he's talking to and birds and seeds and flowers and all that. When Jesus spoke of the kingdom of heaven, he said, it's like a piece of leaven. A little yeast will make bread rise, though it's small and hidden from your eyes. The kingdom is like a mustard seed, though tiny it grows to be great indeed. Some seeds grow in secret there in the field, but when harvest time comes, fine fruits they yield. So it has a picture of bread coming out of an oven. And then the last one, like a house on a rock, standing firm in the storm, unshaken by wind and safe from all harm. So is God's kingdom a foundation strong to keep you through trouble and guard you from wrong. So I feel like that actually brings in some of what Isley said and some of what you said um, that you said you think that a lot of the other parables are about the kingdom, but this book interprets that the parable of the two builders is also about the kingdom, that God's kingdom is, I guess, the kingdom is made up of the people who put Jesus' words into action, who hear his words and obey it, and so they have a strong foundation and won't be shaken. Um, and then Isley said that the storm is like sin, and so it says that, um, that building a strong foundation will keep you through trouble and guard you from wrong. So obeying Jesus' words is like the protection against sin. So maybe then the storm is trial and temptation and being obedient to what Jesus has just said in the Sermon on the Mount and in other places is what's going to make you strong and able to stand up against temptation. So I just thought this was a nice little example of how we might teach this to kids, um, but I even found it helpful for myself <laughs> too. And so I think that as youth and adults, it's still even helpful to have things like this with illustrations, you know, color, pictures, even rhyme and rhythm can be helpful and um, just make it more interesting and more fun as we think about these stories of Jesus. Absolutely. And I think, you know, anyone who's tried to teach something to a kid, you realize it makes you makes you have to think about it and internalize it in some different ways. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like it's a popular thing to say even now on like podcast or, or things like that. If you have an expert on, you will hear the host or someone like that say to the expert, so explain this to me like I'm five. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are you saying? Or mm -hmm. some people will say in layman's terms. Like if you're yeah. talking about technology, like explain this to me like I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Dumb, we may even say, quote unquote, dumb it down for yeah. me. You know, and, and I think the reality is you can only, you, you can do that best if you have a full grasp of kind of every angle of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it does help us to think about, so how would I explain this yeah. to a kid? How would I teach this to a kid? What do I, if I'm talking to one of my kids about this, what would I want them to take from this? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why I say, you know, with, with this one, I don't think I, you know, I, I do think there are some some fallacies in like in this idea that like our lives are our lives are uh, there's some saying our lives are a direct result of the choices we make or something mm -hmm. like that you know which I think is true to an extent but you could there are some maybe some fallacies there of there are just some things that are beyond our control right. and other things like that so but generally you know we want to teach our kids make good choices because mm -hmm. the the choices you make matter. And I, and I think that can be found here. And then mm -hmm. I think as you grow a little from there, there is this idea that, that yeah, the, the choices that I, 
that as citizens of the kingdom mm-hmm. that hopefully we are making are those that we feel like are in line with what Jesus is calling us to do, yeah. that, that are in line with, with the way that the gospel is, is calling me to, to live as a citizen of the kingdom. And then I think as you kind of go from there, like one of the things that, that, that has been impactful for me about this story as an adult coming back to it is, is the repetitive nature of both the building of the house and the coming of the storm. Mm -hmm. That it's like both of these people, both of these builders seem to know how to build a house well. Mm -hmm. And so part of what I like to kind of play out is, so what would even, like I know this is, this is maybe getting maybe past kind of what Jesus is doing in the story to an extent, but it's, I think it's, we've talked about this invitation to be curious and to Mm -hmm. ask questions with these stories. Like what would what would prompt a wise or what would prompt a builder who knew how to build a house and could apparently do it well, well enough to build it on sand? Yeah. What would even prompt a builder to do that? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think there are several potential answers to that mm-hmm. that could further our understanding of the story. Okay. So like, what do you think, Rachel? Why would someone build their house on yeah. sand? Because if you if you know how to build a house. You probably know that's not the best best place to build it. I think that Jesus isn't saying, like, somebody is really going to go do this. I think he's just saying, like, you listening to me and then not obeying or putting my words into practice is as ridiculous as having all of that knowledge of construction and making a dwelling for yourself and then to, like, set it up on sand. Like, it's just as stupid. You're missing the point. You're missing the key ingredient. Um... Or it's maybe going to be a good house for a while, and then pretty soon it's going to fall, and it's not going to be some little crumbling. It's a great, like, a great fall, a great destruction. So I think Jesus is saying the point of it is himself. That if you miss me, and you miss my words in the way that you build your life, you've missed the main thing. You've missed the foundation. So... I don't know how to answer the question of why would someone do that, but I think he's saying this is obviously a stupid choice. And so if you don't obey me, you are just as foolish as that person. Right, yeah. What are you thinking about your question? Why would someone build on sin? I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I ultimately, I agree with you, but I think it, I think to me, it's just an interesting way to kind of explore some of these. Cause mm-hmm. I could almost like, if you play out that scenario, scenario, I do think, yeah, it could be a stupid choice. It mm-hmm. could almost, it could also be like a prideful choice. Mm-hmm. Like I can do this well enough mm-hmm. to where it's going to stay on sand. <laughs> like yeah. I'm confident enough in what I can do that I can build this house that it's going to stay here. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the realities of life, when it comes, it's just like, no, you, you can't. Yeah. So it's this reminder of, of kind of pushing against pride and that, no, mm-hmm. you can't always do things your way mm-hmm. without examining what would actually happen if, if that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe some of it is pride. Maybe some of it could be ignorance. Maybe some of it could be, I know this is risky, but I'm going to kind of quote unquote, sow my wild oats while I can. Mm-hmm. Right? I, know, I know maybe eventually this house is going to get knocked down by a hurricane, mm-hmm. but I'm just going to do it and enjoy it while I can. Yeah. Well, then when it happens, like the actual destruction of it, maybe you weren't fully prepared for. You thought mm-hmm. you were, but now, now what do you do when your life is just devastated yeah. and, and that you don't have anything to, to kind of come back from? So I just think, to, to me, that's a way to kind of explore the parable a little deeper as you get older, mm-hmm. that, that maybe you could think through some of the levels of it a little more than, than you know you would with, yeah. with a five-year-old or a 10-year-old yeah. or something, yeah. that, that I think helps us to see, yeah, these are, these are times in my life when I acted stupidly, mm-hmm. or when I acted arrogantly, or pridefully, or, or without any regard for, for what could happen if... If, if I wasn't making the, the kind of the choices that I knew I should make or, or yeah. following Jesus as closely as I knew that, that I should be. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing about the storm that, cause I do think to, to me, the storm just represents like anything in life that could throw you off. Yeah. And, and, and that could represent a number of things. Mm-hmm. It could represent your sinful behavior. It could represent loss of a job. It could represent loss of a family member, someone literally in the family a dying, storm, like a literally a like storm. Yeah. Natural disaster. Twice. 
due to hurricanes and floods. Right. Yeah. Anything <laughs> in life that could throw your yeah. life off course. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think in, in that case, I think that that's this reminder to me of when those things happen, it's too late to go about building something up. Mm-hmm. You have to have something that has a firm foundation yeah. at that point that's going to withstand it. Mm-hmm. That when the storm is coming or when the storm is upon you, it's too late to say, all right, now I'm going to buckle down and, and build a faith. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. I think that one more application that we could get to in our adult life or possibly at youth, at youth is to go back a little bit and to see it simply again to try and interpret the parable through childlike eyes and what i mean by that is to to try and apply precisely what you think jesus is getting at so i think that looking at this with adult eyes or with someone who's walked with jesus for a while i should look at this parable and then evaluate my life and my Christian walk and go back through the Sermon on the Mount and say, if you're telling me if I don't obey what you're saying, then I'm as stupid as somebody building their house on the sand, then I need to go back through and check all these things. Like, am I loving my enemies? Am I showing generosity? Am I forgiving those who've hurt me? Um, Am I rejoicing when I'm persecuted? Am I worrying about finances and provision? Like to go through all of those things and to just really take an honest assessment of, am I living out the teachings and the words of Jesus? Because if not, he says that I'm foolish and I don't want to be considered foolish by God or anyone else. So I think that that's like, an adult application that's going back, you know, more simply, taking it um, at the, the basic layer of what it is. I think that that has just as much meaning as any, like, more complicated application we could make. I agree, yeah. And, and again, I think it's, to me, it's, it's what makes this a, a good parable to explore at different age groups because... On one level, it is the simplest, one of the simplest parables, I think, Mm -hmm. to understand what Jesus is saying. Yeah. You are wise to not only listen to what I'm saying, but to put my words into practice, and you're foolish if you don't. Mm -hmm. Like anything else is sort of just just riffing off of other kind of nuances on the parable that we might that might be good for us to talk about or good to play out or or good for for us to explore in some of some deeper ways. But at a base level, that's it. Yeah. You're wise if you put Jesus' words into practice and you're foolish if you don't mm-hmm. from Jesus' perspective. Yeah. And so it's one of the easiest, I think, just to grasp the simple base message of. Mm-hmm. But perhaps one of the most difficult to, yes. to live out. Mm-hmm. So here's what that means. Right. <laughs> and that's when it gets complicated. Mm-hmm. And, and even thinking about our current conversation, maybe that would even be a better place to explore differences in how we would teach it. Mm-hmm. That, that the application, not that, not that we have a different application about loving others, mm-hmm. but that that would look different for a nine-year-old right. than, than it would for a 40-year-old yeah. in some situations. Mm-hmm. That the applications that are going to be different for a nine-year-old who's you know, thinking about you know, getting along with a person that annoys them at school mm-hmm. or with a 40-year-old, maybe the same thing, getting along with yeah. the person that annoys them at work or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. but you're, I think that is where you're sort of dealing with some different issues and different mm-hmm. circumstances. And so maybe that would even be where it would be better to kind of shift in some of the conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe, it, yeah, it is better just to return simply to, here's what Jesus says, yeah. and let's, let's figure out how I do that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. This, this story also makes me think about, kind of to the point I was saying earlier about, you know, when the storm hits, you've got to have mm-hmm. something that's ready at that point. Mm-hmm. And so that makes me think about several things. And, you know, one of the things that make, you mentioned natural, natural disasters and, and hurricanes and stuff. And, and I remember when we lived in Portland, down by Corpus, you know, we were there when Hurricane Harvey came through. And, and so we had all of the... Um, 
we had all the hurricane shutters and stuff in our garage. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking for a long time, I was like, you know, I should probably learn how to put those uh -huh. hurricane <laughs> shutters up on the windows. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, I ah, will probably never have to mess yeah. with it. But then when it came, like Hurricane Harvey intensified Rapid. rapidly. Yeah. And so in one day, we went from like not thinking life was going to mm -hmm. be disrupted to like, all right, what's going to be the best route out of Corpus? Mm -hmm. And so I remember I attended a funeral that morning. And when I left the funeral, it was like the world was like different, just going wow. into the funeral and coming out. So everybody was going to get their kids out of school. Mm -hmm. Everyone was boarding up their houses. So I, Ashley had to go get Isley from school and I had to go home and figure out like that day. <laughs> So how do you put these hurricane yeah. shutters on houses? <laughs> Luckily, I was able to call people and be like, all right, so what do I do with this? Uh -huh. Where does this go? But that was the sort of room. And I, so luckily, in that case, I figured it out, yeah. which probably isn't the best application <laughs> for this story today. <laughs> but it's like if I didn't have those, I would have been in trouble. Right. And so luckily, I was able to call people who knew. But whereas before, I was like, am I ever really going to need these? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was like, you know, chances are probably not like yeah. these are just taking up space in my garage. Do I even need these things? Mm -hmm. But then when you need them, it's like now I really need these. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what else I have in this house. It doesn't matter what other possessions we have here. Like none of it's going to last mm -hmm. if these if these shutters aren't put up and put on yeah. properly. Mm -hmm. And and so I think about that sometimes with this story. And the other thing that I think about just kind of about that idea of being ready is the story of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. in, in the Old Testament, which is one of my favorite kind of Old Testament narratives. Because I think of those three as, as guys who, it was like they knew where they stood, they knew what, the, what their foundation was. They had no idea like what was gonna happen to them that day when, mm -hmm. they, when they have to make a decision. Like, am I going to bow down before you know, this image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up, mm -hmm. or am I going to stick to what I know and risk my life because of it? And, and so because of that, like when the moment of faith, when the moment of decision came, they were just able to, because they knew who they were and where they stood, they were able to make the decision right then. Mm -hmm. No, this is, this is who we are and we're not budging from that. Yeah. And so to Isley's interpretation of this parable, their life was spared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but I think about that in relation to this, that there are those times when we never know when that moment of decision is going to come. Mm -hmm. And it does seem like that's a lot of Jesus' parables kind of point mm -hmm. towards that, point towards a, a moment of crisis, as yeah. some people call it. Mm -hmm. And it's presenting this crisis. It's presenting this, this kind of question of, okay, so when this happens, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And do you have a faith? Do you have a foundation that's going to be able to sustain you whenever the storms of life are going to come? Yeah. Because whether you build a great house on solid foundation or whether you build a house on the worst foundation, the storms are going to come mm -hmm. either way. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. I love those images. Very helpful. To, for me, almost all of the parables remind me of the parable of the sower and how uh, in that one, Jesus talks about that there are some people who when crisis comes or the cares of the world or wealth or whatever or temptation the seed is lost it's torn away um, and so I think that this one relates to that and Jesus is saying if you set your foundation on me you will be prepared when those things come and you'll be able to endure your faith won't be knocked down and so I think that's the key here yeah and that setting our foundation on him isn't just listening Doing. it's listening and then doing it the hard part the hard part <laughs> right because he was probably really fun to listen to but the doing i think a lot of people went away scratching their heads and then some of them were like yeah i'm about this i'm gonna follow this guy and other people were like i don't know that looks too risky he's talking about like drinking blood and stuff i don't know that's weird <laughs> <laughs> yes well thank you rachel yeah. Isley's not here anymore, so we can't tell her thank you, but it was, good. it was good to get her perspective on it as well, yeah. and it's good, good to explore these parables. I don't know that we'll explore parables every week of this series. Some people may be getting tired of parables, but there's a lot of parables to get into and a lot of things to, to explore with them. So, Rachel, you want to close us out today in prayer? Okay. Yeah, let's pray. 
God, thank you for your word and that we have the privilege of hearing the way that Jesus spoke and the words that he said. Help us to know how to put them into action in our own lives and to be humble enough to evaluate if we're obeying those words. I pray that each of our people would choose to make you their foundation and that they would be able to withstand the storms of life.